friends watch. Oh, that's so loud. I'm surprised. Is that the last one? No.
פיתחו לי שערי צדק אבובם אודיה, זה השער לאדוני צדיקים יבואו ובואו. Open the gates of righteousness for me that I may enter them and praise Adonai. This is the gateway to God, to Adonai. The righteous shall enter through it. These words are from the Hallel Psalms that we sing in the morning during this festival of Sukkot. So, Chag Sukkot Sameach. Chag Sukkot Sameach. If you want to be even more wordy about it, you can say, Moadim Lesimcha. Which means happy, happy holidays means happy. But the answer to Moadim's the Simcha or the response is Esther. Hagim Uzmanim Lissason, which means our festivals and, and our seasons are for joy. Or you could just say good Yantif. It's not actually Yantif anymore, but it's Shabbat Shalom, good Shabbos. So turn to the people around you. Well, welcome to Temple B'nai Or. Welcome to Shabbat. Welcome to Sukkot. Turn to the people around you. Of course, if you're online, say Shabbat Shalom in the chat. As you see, the, the cantor is off tonight, but we have Kolot or our adult choir with us. Let us bring in Shabbat. The candle of blessing is on page two. It's our honor to call up the Herbert family. Verse, verse 9, there's a tradition of, of rising and welcoming in Shabbat. We rise and turn to the back.
Adonai, our God, from whom the evening flows. Your wisdom sets the way on which time and season glide. Your breath guides the sail of the stars. Creator of the tide of time and light, you guide the current of day into night. As heaven spans to infinity, you set its course for eternity. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, from whom the evening flows. You say Amen. Page 30. Everlasting love you offer to the people of Israel by teaching us Torah and mitzvot, laws and precepts. Therefore, Adonai, our God, when we lie down and when we rise up, we will meditate on your laws and your commandments. We will rejoice in your Torah forever. Day and night we will reflect on them, for they are our life, and doing them lengthens our days. Never remove your love from us. Who loves the people of Israel?
בכל לבבך ובכל נפשך ובכל מאודיך והיו הדברים האלה אשר אנוכי מצבך היום על לבביך ושיננתם לבניך ודיברת בם בשבתך בביתך ובלכתך בדרך ובשוקלך ובקומך וקשרתם לאות על ידך והיו לתותפות בין עיניך וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובשעריך למען תזכרו ועשיתם את כל מצוותי ואיתם קדושים לאלוהיכם אני אדוני אלוהיכם אשר הוצאתי אתכם מארץ מצרים להיות לכם לאלוהים אני אדוני אלוהיכם אדוני אלוהיכם אמת Page 39. In a world torn by violence and pain, a world far from wholeness and peace, give us the courage to say, Adonai, there is one God in heaven and earth. By heavens declare your glory. May earth reveal your justice and love. From bondage in Egypt we were delivered. At Sinai we bound ourselves to your way. Inspired by prophets, instructed by sages, We overcame oppressive forces. Though our failings are many and our faults are great, it has been our glory to bear witness to our God, keeping alive in dark ages your vision of a world redeemed. Let us continue to work for the day when the nations will be one and at peace. Then shall we rejoice as Israel did, singing on the shores of the sea. חזק ממנו, ברוך אתה אדוני על ישראל. And you say, Amen. We're on page 43 and 42, both the English and the Hebrew, Hashem Yibbenu. We, we pray for God to gross sukkat shalom shomecha to gross Aleinu Sukkah Shlomecha to spread over us a Sukkah of peace.
Yesu kan shalom alenu ve al kol amol Yisrael ve al Yerushalayim. Blessed are you, blessed are you, Adonai, guardian of Israel, whose shelter of peace is spread over us, over all your people Israel, and over Jerusalem. We're on the bottom of page 44. to page 46 where we begin the Amidah together and then we'll continue privately. So our ancestors are on the even number pages or your eyes, your heart may lead you to the contemporary prayers on the odd number pages. I want to point out on page 56 there is a special prayer for Kot when, when you get there. Of course we can always pray the words of our hearts. We rise and when you are finished with your prayers, you may be seated. We continue through page 62.
for our loved ones who are in need of healing. Refuat nefesh, refuat agufi, healing of body, a healing of spirit. This Shabbat we are praying for Uri ben Ahuba, Esther ben Ari Altman, Michal Altman, Stacy Baratz, Judy Benjamin, Richard Benjamin, Larry Benson, Richard Chopin, Ken Christ, Eleanor Dankner, Alan Goldstein, Harriet Goldstein, Harriet Hochberg, Paige Holt, Oliver Horn, Andy Jewell, Lawrence Keith, Larry Kessler, Reese Osmond, Donna Paris, Eileen Reinfleisch, Carol Rosenblatt, Scott Sains, Amy Schlosser, Jolly Shallot, Carol Sheridan, Gunnar Shields, Anita Swatinsky, Marjorie Van Dow, Lisa Wolper, and Izzy Yagoda. If you are praying for someone, like to say their name, please do so as I go around. And if you're online, of course, you can put a name in the chat. Feinberg, Meitav Feinberg, Meir Anubek, Amina Dav Bloom, Eviatar Bloom, Yariv Sa'ar, Sharon Sa'ar, Ruben Colton, Netaf Colton, Benjamin Carlton, Halel Tenemam, Jeremy Tillinger, Narav Nimrod, Peretz Sol, Ben Ziva. And we, we pray for the hostages. We pray now that the Perhaps the paradigm, the, perhaps things have shifted in the war that maybe there'll be a breakthrough and the hostages will come home soon. But this Shabbat, focusing my prayers on Matan Angres, who was 21, he happened to be at Nahos, the kibbutz that was attacked on October 7th. He was taken hostage along with his friend Itai Chen. Matan is the eldest of four siblings from Kiryat Bialik and shares his birthday on November 28th with his younger sister Adi, who's 18. They usually celebrate together, and of course they would not get to do that. His family has said in interviews that Matan is a natural student and dedicated soccer player who is a longtime fan of Maccabi Haifa. We pray that he and all the hostages return soon, that all the bloodshed should end.
Sukkot began on Wednesday evening. And my family, we were sitting out in our sukkah, and then I came here and sat out in the sukkah here, and I was here last night in the sukkah, and, and I noticed that, you might have noticed, it was kind of chilly, right? But then, you know, I, I calmed myself down because I thought of, you know, only a few generations ago, my great-grandparents, my great-great-grandparents were sitting in a sukkah somewhere in a shtetl in Eastern Europe, and it was probably much colder there, probably much muddier too, probably smelled like animals, and here I am sitting on a nice patio in a suburban house in a sukkah, all safe. Then, you know, you think about our ancestors, and we say that Sukkot is about the wandering in the wilderness, not just the end of the harvest season, but also about the wandering in the wilderness through Sinai for 40 years, and our ancestors built Sukkot to live in. And if you think about that, traveling through the wilderness with sandstorms, with locusts, with whatever else, Sukkot is not a great thing to live in at all. In fact, when you build a sukkah, it has to be flimsy. It can't be permanent. Or at least, here, here's a little halakha for you, that if you have like a pergola in your backyard, that could be your sukkah as long as you put a wall on it and you cover it with greenery. But that greenery has to be able to see the stars. But really, that means it has to kind of be able to blow away, right? And I know a lot of friends built Sukkot, you know, a few days here on the East Coast or in the Northeast before, before Wednesday night, and their schach, that's the word for the roof of a sukkah, blew away, right? It has to be flimsy. It has to be not a permanent dwelling and not a strong dwelling. And Sukkot has to be filled with joy. So if it does rain or if it gets too cold, you say, you, you say the blessing for dwelling in the sukkah, you eat a little bit, and you could go inside. We're a practical people. So let's think about this sukkah. And turn in your prayer book to page 42. Because the word sukkah is used several times in this prayer, or used use twice in this prayer. We say this every night. There's a weekday version that's slightly different in the Shabbat and holiday version. Hashkivenu Adonai Ohinu Lishalom, Vahami Denu, in the Reformed Prayer Book it says Shomrenu, traditionally say Malkenu Lechayim, Ufros Alenu Sukkat Shlomecha. Grant, O God, that we lie down in peace and raise us up, our guardian, to life renewed. You also say this uh, before you go to sleep at night, or a version of this, before you go to sleep at night. Spread over us the shelter of your peace. What's the word for shelter? Here, sukkah. Shed, spread over us a sukkah of shalom. Guide us with your good counsel, for your namesake be our help. Shield and shelter us beneath the shadow of your wings. Defend us against enemies, illness, war, famine, and sorrow. In the traditional, uh, uh, the traditional wording, you also say, defend us against Satan, right? You know, as, as our neighbors say, Satan, right? Okay. Distance us from wrongdoing. For you, God, watch over us and deliver us. For you, God, are gracious and merciful. Guard our going and coming to life and to peace. Evermore blessed are you, the guardian of Israel, whose sukkah of shalom is spread over us, over all your people, Israel, and over Jerusalem. So I was thinking about this while I'm sitting in my flimsy hut, or should I say tabernacle? That's a fancy word that, you know, used from the King James Bible, but tabernacle is just a fancy old English word that means hut. So I'm thinking about this while I'm sitting in my flimsy hut that we're asking God to build one over all of us, over all of the world, over Jerusalem, which is the symbol of world peace. Why would we want this? Shouldn't we ask God to build over us some kind of impenetrable dome? Some kind of fortress of solitude? Some kind of, you know, even an igloo? Why do we ask God to spread over us a sukkah? And that's the symbol of peace 
and security and, and comfort. I want your suggestions. Why is sukkah is the image? Ellen. Maybe because um, it encourages us to be more one with the rest of the world and the universe and nature. Ah, it, beautiful. So Ellen said it encourages us to be more one with the rest of the world and nature. I'm, good, beautiful. I'm going to take that in a few ways. Actually, Sukkot, uh, in the ancient days in the temple, Sukkot, there was a lot of different rituals going on with Sukkot. We have the Lulav and Etrog. At the end of the week, there's a ritual where you pour out water because you know that the rains are going to come. We don't need this water we have now because more water is going to come. And there was another ritual, which was sacrificing the most animals of any holiday. It was 70 bulls because our ancestors said there are 70 nations of the world. So we, the Sukkot is a holiday for the whole world or the way, way we connect with the whole world, but, but you're adding in nature too, you're saying. And I think that's beautiful too, because we humans, we are the one animal who likes to believe that we're not a part of nature, right? That we shelter ourselves from the outside, but we are, we are part of nature. Only a few years ago, there was a, a virus that, that reminded us that, that we are part of nature, right? And so maybe the sukkah is a way to think about being part of the world, and then when you are part of the world, if I'm interpreting your words maybe, tell me if I'm wrong, Ellen, that when you're part of the world, you can then think about security and safety and peace. Is that what you? That's not what I was thinking, it sounds good. Thank you, okay. Nancy. Uh, I think of it as something portable. Yeah. You can take it with us wherever we go. So Nancy said that the sukkah is portable and there, therefore maybe peace should be portable and it should be something we can take with us wherever we go. And I think also, actually, um, I, on Wednesday night here during services, I read an interpretation by a, 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 a late 19th century uh, re American reform rabbi who said the sukkah is the symbol of progress because we Jews are bringing progress to the world. But, you know, that was a very late 19th century way of thinking. But, but it really, it's, it's a symbol of wandering too, that we are a people who has wandered the world, but also can be the symbol of peace for everyone everywhere. Be beautiful, Jordan. Right, so, so Jordan said, if we wanted God to build us this permanent structure, then we would forget that we're part of the universe. Very nice. And I wanna take that even a little bit, well, I, I could go a lot of ways with all these things, but like, I wanna take that a little bit further too, that maybe true security and peace comes when we see that we're partners with God in it, right? And when we hold ourselves in a permanent structure or we ask God to, hermetically seal us up for for safety that says that we rely only on god and we have nothing to do with it right i think i i i like that image a lot that peace is a partnership the sukkah shalom the sukkah of peace that will cover the whole world is not just something that god does it's something that we have to also build but not to separate ourselves from nature and God and the people of the world, right? Very nice. <clears throat> and yet at the same time, sometimes we want to just seal ourselves off as, as Jews, right? Yeah, Katie. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. So, so Katie says, because it's a flimsy structure, even if it's made by God in this prayer, you still have to, if it gets knocked down, you have to build it back up. So that means we always have to work at it, right? Which I think is related to that partnership part. That's what a breach is, our covenant, right? Very nice. Yeah. Other suggestions, comments? And so you know, we say this prayer every evening in the evening service before we go to bed. 
this idea of a, of a sukkah, of a, a shelter, but a flimsy shelter. Sometimes we need the strong shelter, you know, the, uh, you know in Israel, the Iron Dome and, the, and the, um, uh, the arrow system, but those are not impenetrable totally. All shelters are flimsy, essentially. Right? Our ancestors also believed, though, that the sukkah that God will build in the future that covers the whole world, that's hinted at in the prophets, is made from clouds. God's clouds of glory, the anane hakavod, like the, the pillar of cloud that led the Israelites in the wilderness. Again, a cloud is something that, can, that is uh, intangible, right? You can go through it. But the vision of peace for the world is this vision of Sukkot. So I pray that we all have the rest of our Sukkot, a, su a Sukkot of peace. I pray that someday this Sukkot Shalom, this Sukkah of peace, covers our loved ones in the land of Israel, covers the whole Middle East and spreads out to the whole world. May you all have a Chag Sameach and a Shabbat Shalom. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to have our closing Adon Olam. Well, well first I'll lay new Kaddish and we'll have our Olam. But we will all go into the sukkah tonight, where we'll do kiddush there, and you'll have the opportunity to have the, the mitzvah of eating some challah in the, in the sukkah. If it gets too cold for you, you can go inside. Let us turn to page 282. Please rise. in our lives, overflowing like a river with understanding, loved each of us for the peace we bring to others. May our deeds exceed our speech, and may we never lift up our hand, but to conquer fear and doubt and despair. Rise up like the sun, O God, over all humanity, and cause light to go forth over all the lands between the seas, and light up the universe with the joy of wholeness, of freedom, and of peace. Think of our loved ones whom death has recently taken from us, those who died at the season in years past, and those whom we have drawn into our hearts with our own. We think of the most recent passing of Wendy Sansevery. We're in the period of Shloshim, the first month of mourning for Enid Kadish, Leonard Sickle, Rita Louise Fox, Glenn Burnfield, and Camille Sains. 
And this week marks the yard site. If you've come to say Kaddish for a loved one, please rise when I say their name so that we can support you. And this week marks the yard site, the anniversary of the death of Melvin Applebaum, David Oresti, Jack Oslander, John Berger, Robert Berman, Ruth Brody, Neil Cherniak, Pauline Fisher, Mariana Fisherman, Sandra Friedman, Stella Friedman, Cecilia Firstman, Ira L. Futteran, Vera Glass, Samuel H. Goldstein, Leah, Leo Gordon, Jay Gorett, Anna Green, Michelle Iskovitz, Anna Israelit, Shirley Kay, Jeanette Kleinberg, Abram Krakauer, Dorothy Leibowitz, Emmanuel Litwin, Elaine Markell, Charles H. Menkes, Sidney Mencher, Hetty Nashuler, Milton Rosner, Marion Silverstein, Zena Slater, Nathan Slepian, Jerome Sylvia, Sigmund Weinschenk, Alice Simcha Wiener, and Adele Yellen. If you're remembering someone, you can put their name in the chat if you're online, and if you're thinking of someone, you can say their name as I go around. May their memories be for blessing. The Mourner's Kaddish is on page 294. Please rise. Yitkadal v'yitkadash me raba v'yalma divra kirute v'yamlich malchute v'chayichon v'yomechon v'chaye d'chol beit Yisrael ma'agala v'izman kari v'imru amen. Yehe shme raba mevarach Le'olam o'amei o'maya. Yitfarach, yishtabach, yitpa'ar, yitromam, yitnaseh. Yitadar, yitalev, yithalal, shemei d'kudusha, b'richu. Le'ela minko berchata v'shirata, tush berchata v'nechemata, d'amiran b'alma v'imru, amen. Yehei shlama raba min shamaya, v'chayim aleinu v'al kol Yisrael, v'imru, amen. O se shalom bim romav, hu ya se shalom aleinu, the alkol Yisrael, vimru. Amen. May the one who creates harmony on high bring peace to us, to all of Israel, to all of the world, to which we say, Amen. Don Olam is on page 321.
Shabbat Shalom. Join me in the sukkah. Thank you, of course, to Kolotor.